Welcome to my course electrochemical energy storage and uh, this is module number 3 where I am uh, teaching the lithium batteries and today is lecture number 14 where uh, properties of electrode material uh, I will be describing as a case study of alloy as a note. So, alloy already I have introduced in my earlier classes. Now, you will have to note that the concept uh, that we developed in part of our earlier lectures particularly in this module uh, that is shown in line to the experimental data of alloy base anode. I have already introduced alloy base anode and you can remember silicon is one of them tin, antimony, germanium, they form alloy with lithium. So, we will introduce that and how the electrochemical properties of this alloy, they compare with graphite anode that will be discussed and then again I will revisit the alloying mechanism which I have taught as a part of my earlier classes. Then from the charge discharge capacity how you can estimate the capacity theoretical capacity from charge discharge profile that will be taught and how this alloy material you can synthesize in a laboratory because still they have not commercialized. So, whatever data we could accumulate is the data that we have uh, procured from our laboratory experiment then how is the half cell performance of this particular anodes and finally full cell characteristics. So, these uh, are the concepts that I will cover in this course, in this lecture I mean. So, as you know this alloy type materials, uh, they are useful for uh, reversible lithium storage and uh, this we will use as anode because of their potential criteria. Now, the current choice of anode material for all commercial battery as you know they are graphite or MCMB and this is uh, mainly due to their reasonably well long cycle life and of course, the materials are cheap and they are having uh, low cost. So, it is economic for us to use them. Now, the disadvantage that is their low energy uh, density uh, in particular the capacity is only 375 maximum milliampere hour per gram and there are certain safety related issues and that is due to the deposition of lithium particularly at the working potential uh, which is very close to 0 volt versus lithium redox and uh, then it is prone to the deposition of lithium dendrite at that low voltage instead of forming the so called alloy. You can remember in one of my earlier lectures uh, involving gold and lithium the alloying characteristics, we have summarized all possible reactions at different voltage regime. So, at low voltage the formation uh, of lithium deposition under potential deposition forming of lithium alloy they are all applicable. So, it is no exception uh, with that and alloy anodes are known for their high specific capacity uh, and safety characteristics. So, working potential is always more than at least 0.1 volt. So, have uh, you have uh, the less possibility of forming the alloy uh, or forming electro deposition of lithium and stuff like that. So, here this table is very important, here I have tabulated the electrode material uh, with uh, potential first, then what are the lithiated phase, then you can calculate the gravimetric specific capacity, also you can calculate the volumetric specific capacity using the formula. I described earlier and volume expansion also can be estimated. So, the example is carbon that is graphite 
that is pretty well studied and well known and it has been commercialized by Sony. Then apart from that the silicon, tin, antimony and aluminum. You can see their potential uh, whether they are multi step uh, or not that you can easily identify from their uh, respective phase diagram. Uh, so, we will uh, see a one to one correlation. Then what are the types of uh, alloy that basically forms at different potentials? So, that has been given. Then you can calculate the specific capacity using the Faraday law if you know the molecular weight and if you know the number of electron that is being exchanged then um, with a certain constant I will uh, describe it. You can estimate this. So, I leave it on you to estimate the specific and uh, volume metric capacity which has been shown in this table based on those composition and also volume expansion you will have to tackle. Now, if you compare this uh, graphite uh, with alloy type of material, this also is a recap uh, because already I have uh, spoke about it several times. So, if you see the layered uh, graphite, uh, there are several steps of the formation of this so called solid electrolyte interface. So, you can have uh, the stage 1 uh, where you can see the SCI has formed uh, due to electrolyte decomposition and uh, usually the solvated lithium, the solvated um, anion they are um, actually disintegrated, but if not then there is a possibility for graphite exfoliation and that leads to the crack of this uh, layered structured material. So, ACI growth which is good. Uh, because it will not uh, uh, expose the unreacted graphite, uh, but at the same time it will be pervious for lithium ion intercalation. So, SCI growth is unavoidable uh, particularly at lower voltage. Then sometimes this SCI uh, dissolution takes place and uh, it also decomposes and once it uh, does that then um, you know, this layer is formed sometimes it exposes the lithium uh, sorry the graphite here and electro deposition of lithium instead of intercalation that is another problem and that can form the dendritic structure and by this time you know that if dendrite forms then they are not a layer by layer growth but they are a um, some kind of sharp needle like structure which is floppy in nature that also disintegrate uh, that can puncture the separator and there could be internal short circuit which can lead to the thermal runaway of the battery. Now, if you want to replace graphite with alloy then you will have to tackle this problem. First one is the volume expansion upon uh, lithiation and beyond a critical size you will see pulverization takes place. So, it is disintegrated and that can lead to the uh, formation of uh, the thicker SEI and not always that this SEI will be pervious to lithium ion. So, that is another problem and due to the combined effect of this pulverization as well as uh, this kind of uh, uh, um, SEI formation followed by their disintegration. What happens that from the current collector this electrode material is delaminated as you can see here. So, you are losing the active material and this will certainly affect the capacity. So, these are the major problem which already I have described. So, this pictographical view certainly will allow you to understand this mechanism more clearly. Now, again I will go back to my general phase diagram and uh, I will ask you to read well and understand the concept that was taught in lecture number 12 and 13 that how to understand the voltage profile once at a particular temperature you start to change the lithium ion concentration. So, according to the B Gibbs phase rule 
all intensive properties including electrical properties vary continually with the composition within the single phase region that is alpha and also within the binary phase region which is alpha plus beta and electric potential particularly the equilibrium potential is composition dependent and particularly when two phase um, mixture is present in the binary system and based on this kind of reaction you can easily estimate the type of uh, uh, the voltage profile because you can reconstruct from the phase diagram the mixing free energy versus composition diagram and from there remember by drawing a tangent knowing the lithium ion potential in the cathode as well as in anode material and apply to the formula of uh, uh, open circuit potential equal to mu of cathode minus mu of anode divided by Faraday constant you can actually estimate what will be the potential involved. So, here I have shown uh, the result which is expected when the alloy lithiates the overall composition is in initially a solid solution phase which is alpha that is in this region and the electrical potential will vary with composition because you can apply the Gibbs law the degree of freedom I estimated is equal to 1. So, there will be a change a reduction in potential when the lithium concentration is increased in this solid solution. When two phase mixture is there alpha plus beta then potential maintain a fixed value because this has lowest uh, Gibbs free energy and you remember the line across this composition where the chemical potential will remain almost constant. So, that will lead you to a plateau uh, of the voltage. So, voltage will remain constant and uh, even if you increase the lithium ion content and beta phase this is a single phase region beta plus gamma two phase region and again gamma is a single phase region. So, it will exactly follow the trend which we have seen in case of alpha and in case of alpha plus beta. So, experimentally um, it has been verified in case of uh, graphite as you can see in case of graphite uh, you have four layers then three then two then one and lithium ion intercalate in it and there is a volume expansion involved here. So, at this particular um, potential you can see you can have a plateau and then when it goes to um, S3 or S2 then uh, you will get another plateau it is not shown here. But uh, in case of uh, uh, the two phase mixture you can have a plateau and then again another types of mixture you get plateau number 2 which basically support the theoretical prediction what we have calculated estimated. Uh, so, it is in line to that. So, now we will see the example this phase diagram already I showed you. So, you can see lithium and uh, antimony uh, that basically forms this Li 2 Sb. So, here two moles of lithium is consumed then Li 2 Sb again take lithium and form Li 3 Sb where one mole of lithium is consumed. Now, the number of moles of lithium that is consumed that is equivalent to number of electron that is exchanged. You know the atomic mass of uh, antimony which is 121.76 gram per mole. So, the charge store is number of mole of electron into Faraday constant and specific capacity can be calculated as charge stored by your molecular weight right. So, in first step what is happening 2 mole that has been uh, exchanged and this one is uh, your uh, molecular weight. So, you get the uh, capacity in coulomb per gram and this is also in coulomb per gram 
and you can convert from coulomb per gram that also I have discussed in one of my earlier lectures in you will get in terms of milliampere hour per gram. So, you get two steps and you know that at this particular voltage you are getting 440 in this particular voltage you are getting 220. So, although the voltage is reducing, uh, so the nominal voltage will be somewhere in between, but the total capacity will be 660 milliampere hour per gram. Now, there is a shortcut formula based on the Faraday law, the theoretical capacity this constant you can easily estimate from the Faraday law, this also I have uh, illustrated once into number of uh, moles of electron that is exchanged and the molecular weight of the relevant material. So, if you do that then you can see that uh, uh, you can also get back these numbers without any problem. So, the calculation of theoretical capacity and the voltage profile uh, identification of that it is not that problematic if you do the practice quite well. Now, the source of uh, this volumetric fluctuation that also can be estimated from the unit cell and uh, here you can see uh, the volume you can calculate for S b and then L i to S b forms. So, from the Ridgefield refinement of the x-ray diffraction you can precisely estimate the A, B, C parameter and also the angle between A and B uh, which is gamma, B and C which is alpha and A and C which is beta and you can calculate the volume and again it forms L i 3 S B having this kind of structure then uh, you can calculate the volume and you can see that about 197 percent expansion and around 79 percent contraction that takes place. Not only always it is volume expansion, sometimes contraction also takes place. So, uh, once you uh, prepare the material, do the lithiation, stop according to that voltage, take out the electrode, do x-ray diffraction, identify the alloying phase and then do a Ridgeville refinement, calculate the lattice parameter estimate the voltage then volume expansion also can be estimated. So, synthesis of the alloy nanostructure uh, this can be done by uh, various route and it can be categorized uh, uh, by two uh, approaches. One is uh, high energy ball mill you prepare this alloy by solid state reaction and then do a high energy ball mill to reduce the particle size progressively. So, that is one way. Second uh, is the bottom up approach. So, uh, in bottom up approach we go for wet chemical synthesis method and solvothermal or hydrothermal synthesis is one of them and in the laboratory we have done it uh, by chemical pre precursor preparation the batch calculation you will have to do accordingly which already I have taught in one of my earlier lectures. Then you can do the uh, microwave or thermal heating. Uh, inside an autoclave uh, just to reduce the processing time. Then you get the product and after suitable calcination sometimes you add um, surfactant here also uh, to modulate the growth pattern. And then finally, you can get various types of structure in 0 D, 1 D and 2 D. So, this nanostructure you can prepare by this route. Electro deposition is one of them. Uh, you can make uh, uh, by electro deposition you can make uh, the layers of the alloy materials and wet chemical reduction uh, that is also another way to prepare this kind of alloy. The challenge is to upscale this material for commercial application still it is in the laboratory based research. So, there are lot of scope scopes to improve their performance and uh, including our group various other groups in the country as well as in the globe, they are trying to uh, work on this material as a uh, effective alternative for uh, graphitic base material. So, as a case study, uh, we did it uh, by a solution based technique and um, what we did, uh, we took say tin chloride and antiponoic chloride mixture in sodium uh, citrate. 
um, in an ice bath, then we age here uh, for 80 degrees Celsius uh, for 6 hours and then we have centrifuged it and we got this kind of nanoparticle of tin antimony alloy. And through X-ray diffraction, uh, we can see that uh, they have uh, a phase pure structure and the structure that matches well with the JCPDS fingerprint. And additionally, we have done a Ridville refinement as well to know their precise lattice parameter the way I showed for earlier case studies. Now you can see that uh, this type of reactions can be identified. What is the typical voltage from their cyclic voltammetric curve? So you can see that there are several uh, reduction reaction that is taking place and there are several alloying reaction that is uh, um, taking place. So uh, the oxidation means lithium is going out. Um, from the uh, structure, a positive material and uh, if it is coming in, then it is a reduction um, reaction. So, uh, lithiation part, the alloying part is shown by this and the delithiation part is shown by this. So, you can clearly identify the voltage and you get this peak. So, whether it is really Li3SB or LiSn or Li2SN. If you want to identify that, you will have to stop the measurement right here so that this phase is affluent and then you will have to do the extra diffraction to see whether indeed you are getting this kind of phases. Similarly, we can do the charge discharge measurement here. The steep kind of uh, structure that easily you can find and which is in uh, line to the uh, theoretical estimation which I have presented. And I have also introduced the differential capacity plot which uh, will basically differentiate this curve and plot dq dv at each potential. So, very precisely you can measure the voltage, the voltage that you have seen here at what particular voltage this phases form that you can experimentally verify by doing this measurement and finally do the differential capacity plot. Then you can match this capacity, the theoretical capacity you can estimate, you can estimate the capacity of this one, this one, this one, add it up. So, the total capacity theoretical should come like this, but experimentally as you can see that we are getting uh, a bit uh, off from that and there could be various reason that is a part of our research. Uh, but, um, close to the theoretical capacity if you get then you are confirmed that your reversibility is quite good and you have prepared a good quality of sample. Then uh, we usually do the half cell electrochemical data by electrochemical impedance spectroscopy and here uh, as I mentioned the pristine sample. Uh, we can have our own uh, Randall circuit, equilibrium circuit developed and there the electrolyte, then charge transfer resistance and additionally formation of ACI, uh, everything is incorporated and the experimental data is fitted uh, in accordance. And from the fitting cycle for pristine as well as after 5 cycle, we can see what is the change. As you can see that the electrolyte resistance does not change much and uh, you know you remember this CPE constant phase element, uh, this part the coefficients are also estimated. Then you can see the charge transfer resistance that is grossly reduced due to some reason why they are reduced. Uh, this is again a part of the research but it happens. So, these are a, one of the tools for us to identify at least that after cycling somehow this charge transfer resistance uh, is uh, grossly reduced. Uh, from the Warbuck tell we can estimate the diffusion of lithium, it is at the low frequency. So, that means inside the bulk of the anode how the lithium is getting diffused that we can understand. And uh, this capacity of the secondary uh, electrode interface which forms after a few cycles, not in the pristine, it is not there, uh, but how they change. 
again this will give you several insight uh, on your sample that how your sample is behaving uh, in an actual half cell uh, with the knowledge that we have uh, found it from using that foundation you can always um, have the capability to know more about your sample what exactly is going on during the experiment by this experimental tool and subsequent analysis. Now, uh, we will have to uh, uh, check that uh, what will be its performance uh, when basically you make a uh, full cell characteristics and uh, this uh, already uh, we have shown for several uh, um, cathode materials starting from lithium cobalt oxide or uh, 1, 2, 3 uh, lithium nickel manganese cobalt and I explained that why lithium manganese cobalt oxide, why not only lithium cobalt or why not only lithium nickel based on this crystal field stabilization energy criteria you must have remembered and also aluminum doped lithium cobalt and several polyanion based material and high voltage cathode. So, one thing is quite clear that there is no point in excessively increase the full cell capacity. So, uh, you are happy with this kind of range uh, less than 1000 that is sufficient for all this um, cathode uh, as far as their capacity is concerned they are far lower as compared to your anode material. So, therefore, there is no point in excessively increase the capacity value. And as you can see uh, this high voltage cathode this is having uh, only about 110 uh, discharge capacity. So, accordingly you will have to do the mass balancing so that the capacity of this thing. So, you take the amount you know the uh, gravimetric capacity we know that is 110 uh, milliampere hour per gram and uh, the capacity of uh, this particular SBSN alloy is around 800 which uh, we have seen or 700 something. So, suddenly you will have to take uh, less mass so that the total charge charge is nothing but milliampere hours. So, the total charge accordingly you select the uh, uh, amount of mass so that the total charge in anode and cathode they remain same and that will increase the or optimize the full cell capacity. So, this is uh, one uh, example of uh, SNSB this alloy here you can see we are getting about 700 around and this is pretty low. So, I will have to make a very thinner anode so that this is mass balance with that. So, this criteria always you will have to follow not first you will have to uh, measure the half cell capacity and then you need to know that uh, how to do the mass balance and then construct the full cell. And after mass balancing you will get something like this adjusting the mass load of both the electrodes. The specific capacities are measured uh, at the same current rate. So, your capacity is balanced and one thing is interesting I hope that you have uh, noticed it that when this one is charged then simultaneously this is discharged and that is true lithium is coming from your cathode site. So, it is getting charged and lithium is getting inserted into the anode. So, it is getting discharged. So, charge and discharge uh, then uh, will allow you to have the full capacity and this is the kind of capacity that uh, we are getting and this is a normalized capacity I have plotted uh, here not the absolute value these are all normalized one, but at least you can see the shape you can estimate the voltage I am leaving it in uh, on you that at this uh, potential if the voltage is there and the cathode voltage in half cell is here. So, full cell what is the voltage that you expect that also I have theoretically explained. Uh, in one of my lectures earlier and if not then again uh, in some other lecture I will uh, draw shed light on it. So, this is the full cell that uh, you are getting. So, the reference for uh, this particular um, uh, lecture is uh, uh, a review article uh, of the electrochemical performance of alloy anodes. So, almost all uh, um, prominent alloys you will get here and this is your study material and apart from that this book is this 
both the books. Let me uh, conclude this uh, particular lecture. So, first uh, we have described the alloy type negative electrodes and what are their associated problem. Then uh, I made an attempt to compare uh, the alloy based anode with conventional graphite. Then uh, again we have recapped the voltage profile uh, from the phase diagram and uh, that was guided by free energy versus composition diagram. So, this has once been illustrated for your understanding and uh, then finally, uh, I showed how to uh, do the capacity estimation and uh, then uh, in half cell uh, configuration, uh, we have uh, described the synthesized uh, uh, alloy material um, tin antimony and how they are synthesized. Uh, that also has been described and uh, from the cyclic voltammetry you can precisely identify the voltage where uh, the particular alloy reaction takes place because there are multiple alloy reaction is taking place and corresponding to that voltage you get a uh, plateau voltage plateau because of the two phase mixing. So, that is experimentally verified that indeed it happens like that. Uh, then we have shown by EIS anal analysis how exactly you can estimate some useful parameter like the resistance for charge transfer, resistance for solid electrolyte interface, uh, estimation of diffusion coefficient of lithium inside the bulk of the material that is also possible, whether the electrolytic resistance is being changed while you cycle your uh, half cell uh, that can also be estimated. So, that was done. Then finally, we introduced the mass balance once again because the anode and cathode they are very different uh, masses. So, the mass balance is required and finally, the full cell characteristics uh, were defined. Thank you for your attention.